Hey, it's Hunt. You found Hunt on Saints. We're talking black and gold football. Do us a favor. Hit the like button, share your comments below, and hit that subscription button so you can get all of our content. Enjoy. The narrative entering last football season in this part of the country was pretty clear. Um, Tampa was tearing down everything and bringing in a mercenary in Baker Mayfield to take over for Tom Brady and they would be terrible. And the Falcons didn't have a quarterback and were going to be terrible. And the Panthers had a rookie quarterback and new coach and were going to be terrible. And the Saints had a roster full of aging players, but productive ones, and upgraded at quarterback to a serviceable player and would very likely be the best of the worst, meaning the division. That was the narrative right here in South Louisiana. And I don't think it was that far off. Carolina was probably worse than we thought. They were atrocious. They fired their coach in the middle of the season. Atlanta played quarterback shuffle and never got out of neutral. And somehow, some way, Tampa scraped it together and Mike Evans went over 1,000 yards again and Baker played really well early and really well late. And the Saints were bad. Just mediocre at best. And instead of the Saints being the best of the worst, Tampa was the best of the worst. And then the bottom fell out with Philly and Tampa won a playoff game, but we weren't completely off with the narrative. And as I sit here in March, understanding that there are a lot of dominoes yet to fall in terms of roster building between now and when they kick it off after Labor Day, I still feel like the division is very much up for grabs. I don't think... I could look, and I'm not even counting Carolina in this point because they got a lot to prove before they're even mediocre. But you look at the other three teams, and I look at New Orleans, and I see a roster with a bunch of holes, and I look at Tampa, and I say, okay, you going to prove that that was legit? or Let's see. I'm not ready to just tell you they're going to win 10 games next year. I'm going to look at Atlanta, and there are some storylines developing that are worth paying attention to if you're a fan of the Saints. And one of them that's catching a lot of steam is Kirk Cousins to Atlanta. Now, there's some Justin Fields to Atlanta as well because he's an Atlanta guy, but it feels like maybe Kirk Cousins might be their preference. And so I wanted to kind of look into that and see what that would mean to the South, in my opinion. This Atlanta team last year was okay on defense. They were 11th in the league in total defense. They were 8th in pass defense, just 20th in run defense. Middle of the pack at 18th in scoring defense. And they were really good in the red zone and third down, top five in the NFL in the red zone and third down. They were fine. And you bring in a defensive-minded coach, Raheem Morris, and you figure they should be a decent defense next year. I don't think they'll be third in the league. I don't think they'll be 26th. I think they'll be a functional defense. On offense, they couldn't find their way. They were 22nd in the NFL in pass offense in yards per game. They were 25th in the NFL in passing attempts per game because they didn't trust Taylor Heineke or Desmond Ritter. They were 8th worst in the NFL in terms of t interceptions, and they obviously weren't throwing it very much, 25th in the league in attempts. They were 26th in passing touchdowns and 27th in QBR. The only teams in the NFL that posted a worse quarterback rating than Atlanta last year were the Raiders, the Panthers, the Patriots, the Browns, and the Jets. That's not exactly fantastic company to keep. So they've abandoned the experiment of Desmond Ritter, and, they're, and it's not going to be Taylor Heineke's team. They've got to make something happen at quarterback, and it sounds like Kirk Cousins may be the guy. So if you plug Kirk Cousins in... And you get the Kirk Cousins from the last 10 years, you've significantly upgraded. Kirk Cousins threw for 4,000 yards in 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, and 22. The two years he didn't, he threw for 3,619 in 15 games. And then last year, he only played half the season and threw for 2331. He would have thrown for 4,000 more. He throws for 4,000 yards and 25 to 30 touchdowns every year. 
Now, you can say he's a little bit of a goob when he says, you like that, you like that. You can say he doesn't win in the playoffs, and you would not be wrong on either account. You could also say he's 36 years old and coming off an Achilles injury, and you would not be wrong about that. But I think at 36 years old, with B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier, who combined with Cordell Patterson to be a top 10 running offense in the NFL last year, they ran it ball. They were third in the NFL in rushing attempts last year. With Drake London, Van Jefferson, who's always kind of been a nice 2-3 type guy. With Kyle Pitts, who's a freak. That should be, at worst, a middle-of-the-pack offense with a middle-of-the-pack defense. I don't think that makes Atlanta a Super Bowl contender. I think it makes them the favorite in the NFC South. Again, we got to see the draft. There's a lot of free agency that's got to happen. There are so many variables here that I'm certainly not about to take a, 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 a flag and plant it here atop the South with a big dirty bird on it. That's not the intention. I'm just giving you my opinion here. I think the Saints are moving backwards. I think they got a bad coach, and I think that they've got some holes in their roster. Maybe the offense finds a new gear because of Kubiak, and that'd be awesome. I think the Tampa takes a step back because I don't trust Baker Mayfield in that roster. And I think Carolina is not even worth talking about. But if you take what I laid out as a mediocre NFL defense, it's very league average, a above average running attack with real weapons on the cheap, high draft picks at wide receiver, starting with Drake London and Kyle Pitts at tight end, and you give me a quarterback that throws for 4,200 yards every year? I, I think that's pretty formidable. I don't know if Raheem Morris can coach. His career record would say he can't, but we'll see. And again, I'm not trying to vault Atlanta to the top of the NFC, although the NFC is a little weak in my opinion. I'm just looking at the South going, well, I think I kind of feel like Atlanta, about Atlanta like I did about the Saints last year. It's kind of the same conversation. You plug Derek Carr in, he always throws for 3,800, 4,000 yards. And you've already got Kamara and Michael Thomas at Alave. And you brought in Foster Morrow and Juwan Johnson. Yeah, that's going to be good. And the Saints defense is pretty good. Now, that didn't work out. And I'm aware of that. But it still kind of feels the same. The variable here, if Atlanta does land Kirk Cousins is what if the Achilles injury essentially knocks him out of commission? And he's not the same guy. He can't move. Age starts to get the arm. He doesn't have Justin Jefferson. Maybe I'm overthinking this. But I think Kirk Cousins is an above-average quarterback. Slightly better than Derek Carr. And I think the Falcons, with no quarterback last year, were very competitive with the Saints. I do think this would elevate them above New Orleans and Tampa. Hasn't happened yet. I'm just kind of reacting to some things that you see, and that's the time of year that we're in. But that's kind of how I see it. Beck, I mean, Kirk Cousins in Atlanta, would that make them the favorite in the South? Yes, I think so. Even though I think the Saints still... It's kind of crazy to even think this, but I do think the Saints still have a better overall roster than them. But Kirk Cousins has shown that he is always he's been. It's it, I think it's it, you can try to compare him with Derek Carr. Cousins has been just more consistently yes. a, a better a better passer, and just in terms of his statistics alone, he's been better. So I think you put him on that team, and I do think that they probably become the favorites in the South. I think if you put a blank helmet on the other side, yeah, and yeah. you told me that I had Kirk Cousins on October 14th, I'd feel like I had a pretty good chance to go win the game. Yeah. Now, you start to get into the into January and Mahomes or Josh Allen's on the other side, I'm going to back off that pretty quick. But like on a random October, September, Sunday, like he's pretty good. Like That's kind yeah. of all I'm getting at. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see if... His regression starts in terms of his yep. age yep. And, and injuries, but but just based off the last few years, I would say that they are definitely the favorites now. If well, they if, if they do if, get him, if that they is, do if, if they, they do get, get him, him, that we'll see as the uh, as the world turns. Um, we'll see if uh, that's the case. Hey, it's on. Thanks for watching. Hunt on Saints. Before you leave, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button. 
leave your comments in the section below, and hit that subscribe button so you get all our content right here from Hunt on Saints. We'll see you next time.